signs of this beast must cease. Look out, I see the lions where he's a jewel of sleep. I wonder who will wake him and bring him to his feet. Speak now or forever hold your peace. The violence of this beast must cease. There's a lion where he's a jewel of sleep. I wonder who will wake him and bring him to his feet. Speak now or forever hold your peace. The violence of this beast must cease. There's a lion where he's a jewel of sleep. I wonder who will wake him. Get up, Lion. Did you think he's gonna stay down forever? <laughs> New day. 1990s, Chef. Be with me. I'm gonna wreck him. For 442 goddamn damnable years. <laughs> the pop is just too late. Strict. I see he was gathered in. But he will still be gathered. Come on. Don't stop. Hello? Uh, hey, this is Daphne. Okay, uh, Daphne, Daphne Black, correct? Daphne is Black. What's that middle name? My name is Daphne Mays Black. Mays Black is my last name. Mays Black, okay. Okay, uh, before we get started uh, with this interview, uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank you for having enough fertilizer in your brain to care about somebody outside of yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me do a prelude before I let you have this, uh, this mic. I heard about you through a video that somebody forwarded to me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And after watching it, my beautiful sister, I was so impressed with it until I shared it. And I also took it and clipped it one of, with one of my personal videos and my videos I don't get paid for any video that I've ever done I don't get paid for them I don't do that uh, I respect the people that I interview and I respect you today because of what you was trying to do and you did it quite well uh, in the video that I saw I also noticed other uh, social media people just like myself uh, used your video and uh, I will assure you tonight that the video that we, I mean, this video that I'm putting together now between the two of us will only be used to help educate the people. And so with that being said, my beautiful sister, I want to say to you, uh, you're not a civil rights person, are you? Excuse me? You're not a civil rights activist, right? No, I'm not. Okay. And what you are doing is that Something just happened concerning this uh, coronavirus, and it yes. did something to you that you feel you have something to contribute to the black community, to the United States, as well as to the president, because you did speak about President Trump, and, and, and I agree with what you said. So with me, yes. doing, with, with me doing this as a prelude into what I hope for us to cover for the next 15 minutes or 30 minutes, I would like for you to uh, start out by letting me know something about yourself. Now, I am the Get To Free Press. I started this many years ago when I found out the traditional mainstream news media would not tell the story in the black community. So that's why I call my uh, network the Get To Free Press, not the ghetto. There's no H in it. I took the H out because there's no hate in me. But what I do yes. is that I get to the people just like I got to you when you put your video out. And now we're going to yes. press it. Now we're going to press it into the minds of the people of America. Now I want you to start from A and go through Z and tell your story that you want to share with the American people. And I may ask a few questions, but I assure you it won't be many. Tell your story, my beautiful sister. Um, I'm 52 years old. I'm a mental health therapist for the state of New York, and I'm also trained to teach behavioral skills to the staff. Um, the, the virus came into play, and we did everything as far as isolating ourselves and things like that. I got a call one day. It was on March 20th. 
that my sister was admitted to the hospital and that I should get my niece who's 11 years old. So I got my niece and I was told to bring her to the hospital to get checked. So I brought her to Montefiore Hospital, which is around the corner from my house. They told me that they can't check her for the coronavirus because they don't check for the coronavirus there at the time. This was on March 20th. They put her in a tent and told me, oh, we're going to check her vitals and you have to send her home. And I couldn't bring her home with me because my husband has, um, he's in heart failure, has a defibrillator. So we decided the best thing was to let her quarantine with her brother who's married and has children. By the time um, I got back home from that and got settled, we got a call from the hospital stating that my sister had passed away. It devastated us. And and what was even more devastating was we weren't even allowed to come and view the body or identify her or anything. All we know is that my sister walked into the hospital and few hours later, she was dead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, That week, week and a half, she had been going back and forth to the hospital. First, they told her she had bronchitis. Then they told her she had the flu. And the last one was she had pneumonia. Because she kept, it, uh, it, it was progressing. And they actually, I found out later on that she had tested her. They had tested her like about three hours before she died, you know, for the coronavirus. You know, um, again, I said they wouldn't let us come in to identify her. So we, all we know is that she walked in and she died. Why do you think, why do you think they waited until three hours? Why do you think they waited? Well, they kept saying she didn't. She had all the symptoms. Mind you, we're in a pandemic, and this woman had all the symptoms. Like, she had all of the symptoms. She had the fever. She had all the symptoms. But they kept saying, we don't test. We don't test. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how you're telling me you don't test for the coronavirus. So people are dying. Literally, people are dying around us. You know, the hospital that day was full of people just in there with with symptoms or, or thinking they had the symptoms. I don't know what happened that they decided that she did not need to be tested. Okay, okay. You know, it. I have to put this out there, and I'm just doing this based on my life history, my life story, and what I've seen, because a lot of people are ignorant or in denial, you know. Based on, it was more based on skin color, you know, that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. But based on my life story, my history, and from what I see, I am very well trained in sociology and things like that. I went to school for that, and I have to go by the behaviors of people. She did not seem important at that time to test. You know, this is a hospital in Manhattan. Okay, okay. I live in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. The Bronx is mostly black and Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Manhattan, the hospital she went to, has a lot of Caucasian or white people. But one thing I did notice is that they were caring for those. You know, I have to go by what I saw. Right, okay. She just didn't seem important enough. And this is not something that I'm just assuming. I am very skilled in body language. I went to school for body language, to read body language, and my job as a mental health therapist, I work with psych patients. That is what we have to go by is on body language. So I have a history, a lifetime history of this. Okay. So, um, we were trying to get things together for the funeral, you know, watching the news and things like that. We seen that they were not trying to release people's bodies and they were storing bodies, even around the corner, the house around the corner, they were putting bodies in refrigerated trucks and things of that sort. So I said, we have to make sure we get her body. Mm-hmm. We paid for a funeral. We got the money up and we paid for a funeral. By this time, no one still would allow us to come in to identify my sister. 
we still had not seen my sister. She still had, it was, she walked in a hospital and her 11 year old daughter was still looking for her mother. And it's, at 11 years old, when people die, you usually see them in a casket and she didn't even have that. She, that's so immoral. She did not have that right. You know, they took that away from her. Mm-hmm. The day of the funeral, we're all walking into the funeral. My niece is sitting in the corner. My nephews are there. And I notice everyone's mulling around. And I want to know, what ha- where's, where's Wanda? What happened to my... They never produced the body. I just spoke to my nephew a little while ago, and again he said, oh, the, the funeral home said that it wasn't their fault. Whose fault is it? I've never heard of someone not delivering a body for a funeral. Where, where is, at this point, it feels like they kidnapped my sister. We, the last thing we saw was her walking into the hospital. Now we get a message, she's going to be cremated on the 21st. How is she getting cremated on the 21st? We have not seen her. We have not had no closure. You guys couldn't even produce her body for a funeral. I've never heard of that. We paid for a full funeral with a body. We got an empty casket, and everybody's blaming this one, blaming that one. So at this point, I don't know what to do. Mm. But I also know I hear of other people having similar stories. I don't want to believe what's going through my head, what I really think, because this is a pandemic. And I've heard on the news and heard just around that they're trying to learn about this virus and they're taking people's loved ones and, you know, doing things with them. And I'm hoping that this isn't a case of them actually stealing her body. But what else can I say? What else am I left to think if... My sister died in a hospital. I don't even have a death certificate yet. You never allowed us to identify her body. We haven't seen her body. We had a funeral and there was no body. Where is my sister? What happened to my sister? What happened? Daphne, are you telling me, and I I want you to give me this very clearly, you're telling me that nobody whether it was through a glass cage or nothing or on TV or on the street, nobody in the family ID'd the body? Nobody ID'd the body. I'm 52 years old, and I kind of know how this works, and I know this is, this is not how it works. You have to produce the body. We have nothing, nothing except the, the word of, our, of the hospital. So impersonal. We don't even know the lady that called. This is what we're supposed to sit with from word of mouth that she died. Not even a funeral. We don't even have a funeral. Where is my sister? I want to know, where is my sister? This is not a stranger. This is someone I've got memories with. This is someone that I grew up with. This is, this is something so close to me. Like, how do you just take a whole person? I can't even wrap my brains around. This is so unreal to me. Let, let, let me ask you another question, and it's important to me. And I'm retired military. Uh, mm-hmm. You're telling me no member of law enforcement, nobody in medical or anywhere else told you or your family that because of the pan- pandemic that we are going to uh, the, uh, store the, the body, but at, at a later date we will have a mass Funeral of all the deaths? Did anybody tell you anything like that? No, 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 no. That wouldn't have even been necessary because we made a funeral. And we had, we set up a plan. There was a plan. The family got together. We had a plan. If they would have said something like that, I would have done everything in my power. We didn't have that option because we didn't have a body. Okay. Well, I know. I, I've heard that they are, through the news, I heard that they are doing mass graves on Hearts Idol. Right, right. That's what I, that's what I, that's, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but this wouldn't be a case because we have already had a plan of how we were sending her off. Right, right. And it was not, it, Hearts Island was not a part of this plan. Okay. 
we were t- our rights as far as what we're going to do with her were basically stopped from the time she walked into the hospital. That was the last time we seen her. It was a phone call that she passed, and that was it. There was no guidance on nothing else about the body? Excuse me? There was nothing else explained to you about the body or nothing else? No. We get the runaround. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Basically, you know, I, I've been, you know, because of the video, I've had people reach out to me and thank God for them, you know, and someone told me they were going to get a congressman involved and try to track her down or something like that. But as of yet, you know, we still don't know where she's at, but this is the United States of America. Since when do we have to find politicians and congressmen and see who knows who just to bury a loved one or to track down someone, someone's body? Like, this is unreal. Since when? Since when is this how we respect our dead? Daphne, did you read, <laughs> Daphne, did you read the comment that was beneath the video? I think it was the last one you put up wherein one lady made the statement that if somebody in your family gets sick, you better take them home or you may not see them again. Yes, that's, I did. That's what she but said. This is, yes, this is based, anything that I said is based on what I've lived. Yeah. What I've went through. Yeah, but this, was, know, this, 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 this was a lady that left a comment after you had told your story. She said, I don't trust them, so if you have a family member, you need to take them home and do what you do and hope for the best. At least you'll know where they're at. Yes. Because of everything that's going on here, we, New York, New York has a new thing where if you have a heart attack, that they're not going to revive you. My husband's in heart failure. So I had to go spend $1,200 to buy a defibrillator. $600 $600 to buy an oxygen tank and an oxygen mask, oximeter, oximeter rather, stethoscope to listen to lungs and listen to heart. I basically had to go and build a mini hospital in my living room. You know, I, I don't know what is going on. This pandemic has just, everyone's going crazy. But this part about, you know, <clears throat> how they're handling people when they die is the worst. We are going to have so many children, so many people suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder or some type of mental illness because of what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. It's going to, mark my word, when this is all said and done, so many people are going to need help. Well, Daphne, you made a statement in your other video, and I want you to talk about that a little bit because I really listened to what you said. They, at okay. that time, uh, Cuomo was talking about the respirators, and uh, you made a statement about there were so many that somebody might have been that the president might have been holding for his friends. Can you talk about that? Well, yes. Um, this was, I think, this was March. This is a couple of days later. He did release um, the ventilators. I'm not sure exactly how many, but I was watching the news, and Cuomo was asking Trump, right, to release the ventilators, and Trump didn't want to release the ventilators, which I don't understand how he can be the president of the United States. You're stockpiling ventilators. You are the president. You are in charge of the country. How can you not want to save the people that you are supposed to represent? Mm -hmm. You know, how how can that be an option to even say no? This is a pandemic. You know for a fact, based on what you've seen in Wuhan, that this is not an imaginary disease, that people are really dying. Mm -hmm. But you are a leader of a country, and you are warding these ventilators, based on everything I've seen of this president since he's went into office, I drew the conclusion that he's saving them for his own people, because this president... From everything I've seen, just based on his speeches and how he moves, he's not for the people. He's on his, he's for himself, and he's for, um, you know, whatever 
it's going to benefit him. Okay. You know, okay. that that's what I see. Okay. So. Now, now, as I said earlier, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a repost. I may post it with this video, uh, your okay. original video that that I have, but I, I want to ask you um, uh, this question. Um, mm -hmm. Since you did that video that I've seen, as I said earlier, I think it was very powerful. It was very informative. It was very passionate. Mm -hmm. Now, since you put that out there, uh, uh, most all the news medias are on my YouTube channel. Now, have CNN, MSNBC, ABC, Nightline, have anybody called you for an interview to tell your story more in depth to the American people? No. I've actually um, been contacted from a newswoman in Mexico, mm -hmm. and I was contacted from a news person in Russia. My story was shared to Ellen, Maury Kovacic, Wendy Williams, um, different news channels. Nobody picked it up. You know, I nobody really cared right. as far right. as the media. They just seemed like they didn't care. Right. I got... A lot. The video was shared, to my knowledge, millions of times. I got a lot of good response as far as who wanted to help me, but the interesting part about it was I got a lot of very abusive comments from people who were Trump supporters, and right. they were proud to say they were Trump supporters. They told me that I'm, excuse my friend, I'm another nigger looking for attention. Mm-hmm. I was told, um, oh, why am I crying? I have a rag on my head. I look like a slave. You know, just a lot of hurtful stuff. No sympathy, no compassion. And my response was, you know, at some point, all of us could be in a situation like this. Right. Daphne, you know? Daphne uh, let me interject at this station right here that... Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing civil rights work since 1975. Last week, last week, uh, Bobby Worthy, Bobby Worthy, and I want you to talk about him in a minute. But Bobby Worthy uh, received a letter from the district attorney, district attorney in Ware County, Waycross, who spoke about Mr. Worthy negatively, and he put me in there, Mr. Ryan, and he addressed me and saying that I was not a certified news media outlet. His name was uh, George Barnhill, district attorney. But, mm -hmm. but I've been doing what I do and the, the traditional certified news media networks as he speak of, they just mm -hmm. refuse to cover the news in the black community. And this is why I came into existence. And for him to make that statement to me, all I can do is talk about him and expose him as a district attorney because personally, I don't think he needs to be a district attorney myself based upon the white lady from what I've gathered through a friend of mine, Judge Nally and Bobby Worthy, the way they took that white lady child from her is a disgrace. Now, so I only said that for this, for this purpose. If CNN and the major white-dominated, white-controlled, white-owned news media refuse to call you when you put yourself out there like a lot of nurses. I mean, I heard some nurses tell their story, but the story that you told to me, it surpasses that of the nurses and some of the doctors that I've heard. So to me, they ought to be trying to get in touch with you so they can get this out to the American people. A lot of the media, you know, it, it, that's also a culture. In my video, I was wearing a headscarf in the color of my skin. It, it, it The way the media, I would assume, picked things, I did not have that look or the status for the cultural media, which is mostly white generated. You know, so they probably would have overlooked me because I, I did not have that look for they probably think I don't have the status, you know, that's the only thing I can think of. 
that's the reason why. Because these are real life. What happens to me is some, I'm a person. We're all people. If this was, and I have to say this, if this was someone white, they would have jumped on it. You would have heard so many stories. There would have been people crying. People would have jumped through hoops to try to help me if I was white. And I have to say this because this is how I feel. But I don't have the color. So I am overlooked. Okay. Nobody cares. No. And this is, from, and this is how people are in so much denial about what's going on in this country. They're so quick to say this is the greatest country in the world. But because they chose to have slavery for 500 years, all of those things that happened to black people, to us, during slavery, is actually, it trickled down. There's a lot of white people that still believe that they are above us, but they won't say it. They will sit there and be our best friend and say kumbaya, but subconsciously, I don't even think they know it, but it's still there. It's still here in this country, but everybody wants to be in denial and say it doesn't happen. I had someone tell me, a white person underneath the speech tell me, oh, why is it always got to be racial? These niggas don't know when to be quiet. I'm not a racist. <laughs> this is a white person saying this. I didn't even answer back because his words that vo spoke volumes to how he felt. A lot of them are not aware that they're racist. Right, right, right. It, it's like subtle little things, you know, until this country is able to address it, acknowledge it, and put a foot down because they think that they've done it, but they're not doing it. This is something that's so deeply in embedded into the threads of this country. Do I foresee it stopping? No, I don't. Because this is in the foundation, the threat of this country, the darker the skin, the lower you are. This is how it's believed in this country, but nobody wants to address it. As much as they say it doesn't happen, they are ashamed to admit that it does. Definitely. Uh, I've been doing this a long time, and people ask me, why don't I quit? Because people don't show any appreciation for the work that I do. So I'm going to ask you, uh, what make you step out from among the crowd in the black community and not bury your head in the sand like the ostrich, like the ostrich bird? What makes you stand out and speak truth to power? Um, this video, I basically have been couldn't believe that this happened. The day that I did that video, I was basically in shock. I was in shock. I, like a lot of African Americans, I guess was in denial. You know, though I had lived through outright openness, I was kicked off of a beach when I was in the South because I was black. We stepped on a white beach. This was in the late 60s, early 70s. But I still continued in denial of what's going on until it happened to me. You know, I've always been a fighter. Mm -hmm. I've always, I don't sit down for anything. So because this happened, I want my sister. That's my sister. That's my, that's mine. I feel like someone stole something from me and I refuse to sit down. Everybody needs to know what's going on. And I wanted everyone to know if I can shout it from the rooftop, give me my sister. You, you can do a lot to me, but what I will not allow you to do is just to outright steal a family member from me. That, 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 was, another, that was another point that was very powerful to me. You covered right. so many areas, but one that got me the most was when you said to the black community, this is real. You want to me you want them to know that this is not a game. You said this is a real situation that need to be dealt with. And you talked about preserving your family members if you care about them. Yeah, oh my gosh. There I, this is the way I see the black community. Again, I'm in the Bronx, New York. We have come so far 
you know, even something as little as being able to vote. What has happened to the black community? Everyone, everywhere in the world, they look down on dark skin, the black culture. That alone should tell our youth, get it together. Stop giving people a reason to put strikes against us. You know, what is going on? Since when did we stop loving ourselves? You know, at what point did we give up as a people to put each other up, to hold each other up? And and just that day, it just hit me. You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and I see my younger sisters and brothers outside just walking around like nothing happened, no mask, no gloves. Right, that's that's what you, yes, yes. And all of that, this is real. How could you not understand? I was just disgusted, more disgusted. Because as of everything that we fought for, everything we've been through, what happened to us as a people, everything that the stereotypes that other races and other cultures feel about us, why can't we just prove them wrong? We are kings and queens. That's how I feel. I have a son. I have a 36-year-old son. I have a 33 and 34-year-old daughter. Mm-hmm. My 33-year-old daughter is about to become a doctor. My 34-year-old daughter has a job. One son, one son, 36 years old, he's in jail. I have three smaller children. Two are my biological and one I adopted. And they are all on the honor roll. And I'm raising my granddaughter. Honor roll. You know, I, I try to instill all of that in them. Be greater than what you think you are. You have to be, because of the stereotype, don't just settle for being great. Settle for being greater than great. You know, and and I'm just so disappointed on so many levels. Daphne, this is why I am so touched by your courage when I first saw the video. You got to run, you got to run to trick this man. You got to run to trick me. Because I do believe, I don't go around going to church all the time. I really don't, because... I'm sick of the church, and they have failed me in so many ways. I was brought up in the church. But my thing is that if the church don't teach people to stand up like you are doing in this situation, I don't need your Jesus. I don't need your God. If your God going to tell you that all you have to do is pray to Jesus and ask Jesus to do everything, and you won't even say get out the way when you see a train coming, you are no value to me. But I thank God. I, I, think- am, I, I do believe in God, and I do believe in Jesus Christ. But God doesn't say, I'm going to do miracles. He gives you the knowledge. And now it's up to you to use it to save yourself. Yep. If you sit there and see a building on fire and go, God save me, I'm going to walk through fire, then you're an idiot. Because he gave you the knowledge not to walk into the fire, else you will burn. De- De- you know. De- definitely. So you you see exactly what I'm talking about. When I was on my way home to see the for to get ready to do this in- interview, I passed by the park and I saw about about at least twelve black folk out there in the park, no mask on. I mean, in each other's face like they lovers. And I said to uh-huh. myself, I mean, what 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 kind of sense does that make? Yeah, yeah. We have to do better. I just want. I, the elder, us elders, us, I'm 52, so us older people, we have to not only try to take care of our children, we have to get back to the point where it takes a village to raise a child. We have to become more in tune, more in tune. We have to go harder. We have to save our younger youth because they're doing exactly, and I don't like saying this either, but they're killing themselves off and this is what this country wants. Yes. Being that we can know we're no longer slaves and we're no longer used to them, they don't want us here. And that's the truth. They don't want us here. You know, but they stole us from Africa. Africa doesn't want us because they're not connected to us anymore. You know. So I just I don't know how to go about it. All I can do is speak 
and hope someone will hear me and listen, but as a black community, we have to focus on becoming better people. My beautiful. A better race. My beautiful you sister. Know, we have yeah, my beautiful sister, uh, thank you for your courage again, and I'm not going to leave until I address the Bible word the situation, but first of all, I want to add this, is that the people from Africa, some of them don't want us back, but some of them know that we are family. I know what, tri I know what tribe I'm from in Africa, and, mm -hmm. and, and they know that they lost their, their, their relatives over here in the West, and I, people yeah. use, uh, we were kidnapped, uh, uh, no, I, some people say we were slaved. I don't use either of those terms. I say we, mm -hmm. we were put in prison. We were brought over here and yes. put in prison because mm -hmm. we was prisoners. We were not slaves. Slaves in the Bible was, was for a time period. And when they came mm -hmm. out of slavery, they had to pay those people. But we were mm -hmm. in prison. And when you are in prison, when you get out of prison, they don't give you no money for the time or the work that you did. Mm -hmm. So we came yeah. over here as prisoners, and that's why the Constitution never meant for us to be free. But the God, mm -hmm. the God that I study, and I'm not talking about the God that most of these people worship. My mm -hmm. God, according to the book of Jeremiah, which I can prove, I think that the mm -hmm. book says we would be in bondage in a strange land mm -hmm. among strange people. For 400 plus years, no other yeah. people, no other people on the planet feel that description than the black man that came and was enslaved in America. And so uh -huh. my confidence is, and another thing while I'm at it, and I don't want to dominate, but they say in civics lesson that the white European books taught me that we were brought into slavery, I say prison, in the year of night in uh, uh, um, 1619 mm -hmm. so I researched that and that's a lie we were brought the first slaves was brought to America in the year of 1555 aboard a slave ship called Jesus captained by one white European slave trader by the name of Sir John Hawkins now if the people who watch this video think I'm lying because the first time I heard it, I thought it was a lie because I wasn't an A++ student, but I know what I learned in school, and they said it was 1619. So I wrote to the, I wrote to the Library of Congress, and you will get this information from the Library of Congress, and this is why I don't back down from the statement I just made. If you can send me that link, I'm very interested in um, what you know and what you can teach me. I mean, if you can send me the link, I would appreciate that. I will. I'm always open to new things, you know, any information, anything that I can arm myself with is yep, good for me. Definitely, Because definitely. whatever I learn, I pass on to my children. Yeah, but definitely, you know. I, de definitely, I appreciate that. But listen, I'll make it easy for you. It's so powerful and it's so right and exact. All you have to do is Google uh, Sir John Hawkins, the first slave ship, 1555, okay. and Wikipedia, okay. all this stuff. Will, it'll even direct you to the Library of Congress. Okay. So I, I'll, do that. Now, I'll do that. Now, now, let's hit a couple areas. I'm going to let you have the final remarks. But what I want you to do, because I did not contact you, and a lot of times uh, I don't contact people. Uh, Bobby Worthy will see a need, and he'll reach out to people, and then he'll send them my way because I'm, I am the press. I got a badge. I got the badge on now, although people say, yeah. they say I'm not certified. But Bobby will call me and say, Rhymes, cover this. So tell me what took place when Bobby Worthy called you, whenever he called you. Tell me a little bit about how this um, got started. I actually, um, I have an online magazine called Dishes That Were Raised, which is where my um, video originally aired. What, 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 so what, 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 Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, tell me something about your newspaper, then we'll come back to Bobby. Tell us what you do on that. Well, it's a celebrity magazine. Um, I actually started it a couple of years ago. It's just a hobby. You know, I, it's a funny story. I was actually, I have my children. I was trying to get more connected with the children. My children are into that stuff, so I started a magazine, you know, just to stay connected with my children and 
and kind of have a hobby with them. Um, but I put this video up the day that my sister passed because I was overwhelmed and I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know what to do. And I was just very, I, I was just torn up inside. Um, a couple of days later, I noticed, um, I got another message and they said that the video had gone viral. A lot of people were sympathetic, but they also said that things like this were happening to other people also. Then I got a message from your friend, Mr. Worthy. Yes. Um, his message was, please call me immediately, no matter what time of day. And I called him to see if he could help me, you know, with the situation that's going on right now concerning my sister. Right. And from there, he referred me to you. Okay, okay, I got you. Okay, well, I just want the people to know that because to the district attorney in um, Ware County, Mr. Uh, George Barnhill, I want you to know Hi. that most cases that the, your certified news media that you talk about, they would never <laughs> interview this young lady, Mr. Barnhill, but I want you to know that I'm doing it, and I'm doing it because I know that the white control the white-owned and white-dominated news media would never do this. I don't understand why CNN and CNN, MSNBC and other news media outlets, I've seen them cover a dog or a cat trapped in a tree. But when it comes down to the black community, they leave our ass stuck up in the tree as if though we don't even exist. That's the same thing I said about the virus. I said they, the tiger in the Bronx Zoo have the virus. They tested the tiger in the zoo immediately. Mind you, you have people walking around here begging to be tested. You can't test them, but you can test a tiger in the zoo? That did not make sense to me in the Bronx Zoo. You couldn't test my sister, but you tested a tiger in the zoo. I know that's right. That doesn't, that, I, I, that was it. That, that was it to me. You know, I, 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 I'm I not a racist person, you know, and I I judge people on their merit. Right. Regardless of what the skin color is. Mm -hmm. I can't deny what I see. Right. I can't deny what I live. I'm not sitting here going to say that everyone with white skin is a racist or has bad intentions to black people. I won't say that because I have a lot of white people in my family. But what I will say is, there are thousands of people walking around unconscious to the fact they racially profile black people before they even get a chance to know them. That is so true. And, I agree with and you. And a lot of them seem to be geared toward Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And from the time he became the president of this country, he basically put a target on blacks and Mexicans back. And he put his seal on that. And from the time he came into office, he has turned this country into a, a living hell. And this is not even, I don't even have to sit here and try to prove this by myself. There are thousands of people out there that can confirm what I'm saying. This man is not being the president. He's having a media frenzy. He's a narcissist. He, I mean, I am capable of sitting here and diagnosing people. This man clearly has a mental illness, and they're letting him run the country. I went to school to be able to diagnose people, and I just don't understand what is going on in this country because they're letting this crazy man, I have to say crazy, because he does have a mental illness, run the country and make decisions. That is the most scariest thing in the world, to have someone like him making decisions for me or anyone else. Do you think, I, I make comments in my videos, and I'm going to do it in this one. As a retired military veteran, personally speaking, based on what I've learned in my almost 69 years on the planet here, being from mm -hmm. the South, I don't think no black man, woman, or child should serve in the armed forces until citizenship rights are guaranteed to the black man, woman, and their children. Well, that's true. 
I mean, the the military will take up. Uh, case in point, I don't know if I can say the person's name, but I had a friend um, years back who joined the Navy, and he wasn't a citizen. He had came over here from Jamaica. They put him in their military, but at the time, you know, I don't even understand how that works. They do the same thing you know? for Pan. They do the same thing for uh, Puerto Rico. Yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> This country is, you know, I'm, I, this country is just out of whack. Would I rather be here than another place? I stay here. This is where I grew up. This is what I know. But just because I'm here does not mean that I agree with everything. Right. You know, right. this country can be better. People are getting too lax, and they are not. I mean, now, I mean, it's going to be time to vote soon. and. The voting has become a circus. You don't know if you're going to get homie the clown. You don't know if you're going to get someone that's qualified. You don't know who you're going to get. You know, I'm afraid. The, 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 I am afraid. Definite, definite. I remember, see, I study everything. I I used to be tied down on one religion. That was the Pentecostal holiness. But I fell on my way to the bus station. So today I love all religions as long as they want to do what's right. But Elijah Muhammad said, and, and I remember this from some of his old tapes because I listened to him. He said, uh -huh. he said that regardless of whether we vote for a Democrat or Republican, we are e black people are either voting for Satan or the devil. In either, si yeah. in either situation, we end up in hell. Uh -huh. Basically, basically, <laughs> you know, um, they talked, uh, Trump supporters talked a lot about Obama. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even, when I voted for Obama, I didn't vote for Obama because he was black. Mm -hmm. Okay? I voted for Obama because I knew he was the man to get the job done. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I don't want anyone to think I just, you know, I, I, I'm not really caring about the skin color when it comes to who I'm voting for. You know, I never thought that we would get someone like Trump in the White House. I never seen that coming. But there's also a part in the Bible that says this is going to happen. The devil is going to get up and dare to lead people. So, absolutely, you know, it, it's it's come to pass. But we have to vote him out because if we don't vote him out, we are going to be excuse my French in a shitload of problems. This man is not even for American people. I mean, he's not. He's for money. That's what he's for. He's not for people. He's for money. He's for status. You know? And yes. it's sad. It's sad. Let, let, me, let me say this, and I know that people who hate me going to use this, and, and so I may say it twice because I want them to get it right when they mm -hmm. speak ill of me for making this statement. I am a black, I am a black man 100%. And I am a black retired military veteran that gets two checks every month from the military. And uh -huh. I want this I want the American people in the world to know what I'm about to say. I voted for and I was on ABC Nightly News with Charles Gibson, by the way, too, because I worked here in my city to get him elected. And they uh -huh. they, they came to, to interview me. And and I, I want to make this statement. I voted for President Barack Obama because he was black. That's why I voted for him. I voted for him because he was black. All these years, I had voted for white men. White men. And so I voted for him because he's black. Yes. And I watched my granduncle, Uncle Jack, who lived in New York and worked for the Cadillac place. And he told me, when I was a young man, before I got out of school, when he came down to Val I mean, to Brooks County to visit mm -hmm. me, he told me, don't go into the armed forces because they don't give a damn about you. He said, I served my three years, and when I got out with the Germans, the damn Germans could come back to America, sit down in a restaurant, mm -hmm. get ice cream, and I couldn't mm -hmm. even get it. He said, so they don't give a damn. He said, don't go in the military. But I ended up going like a fool. Nah. Yeah. Nah. My grandfather is, matter of fact, my grandfather is 100 years old now. And he fought 
in the military, and it, it's a joke. He's, he has all of his faculties. He's a really nice guy. And the joke that he says sometimes is he served in the military, and the enemy <laughs> had more rights than him, he said. It, it's a joke, you know, so, and he always says that he's serious about it, you know. So well, that's the same thing. That's I like, know how to do it. Yeah, that's the same thing my uncle said. Now, I don't hate America. I love America. And and this is yeah. why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because I love America so much, I'm trying to help save America from herself before she destroy herself. Yes, yes. Every great nation falls. You see what happened to Rome, Egypt, all of those back. And just, you got to go through the Bible. And I'm hoping that Trump is, the, is not the reason why the United States falls. But we have to move quickly. I mean... America needs to wake up and see what's going on and see it for what it is. Okay. I would never in a million years thought that someone would actually kidnap someone from my family because that's what happened. Yes. She was kidnapped. Yes, yes. You know, and I'm not going to rest. With my last breath, if it be, I am. someone is going to let me know where my sister is at. Yes, yes. Well, you know. my beautiful sister, let me say a few words, and you will have the last words. I want you to close in your own way. But I want to say this. First of all, I want to thank you for putting that video out. Number two, I want to thank Bobby Worthy for calling you and reaching out to you. And then I come back to you because you had enough guts and enough patriotism for this country to call the Get To Free Press here in Valdosta, Georgia, to interview you, even when your yes. other mainstream news media may not. I'm not criticizing them, but I also must quote the scriptures. The book says that Jesus came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received them, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And so I am here because you are my own, and I want you to feel that I belong to you. Now, I'm going to allow you to close in your own way, and that will pretty near get it for tonight, my beautiful sister. Okay, I just want to thank you. I, I mean, anything that you can do, any press that you give me is one step closer to me finding out what really happened with my sister. And I just, I'm actually overwhelmed, you know, that you actually took the time. This is your time. You didn't have to do this. Right, right. You know, mm -hmm. God gave you a really big heart. So I just want to say thank you. And I'll keep you posted on what's going on. Okay, now, can you, do you mind, do you have a website, do you have a phone number, do you have something that if somebody watches my videos, like I almost got 2 million views and 5,000, they say 4,054 subscribers, but I believe I got 4 million views and I believe I got 15,000 subscribers, but they don't want it to be known, so they try to cut them back so people won't know the influence that we have among the people of America. But I have people in yeah. foreign nations, listen. I have people in the foreign nations, such as Germany, Thailand, hitting me up, telling me thank you for the work that I do. But so yes. often here in America, it seems as if though they want to keep the people deaf, mm -hmm. dumb, and blind to the times, and mm -hmm. unable to make yes. intelligent decisions based yes. on facts. Yes. People are unaware that this is turning into a communist country bit by bit. I don't know. Wow, that's, I like those words that you said. That is very powerful what you just said. They, yes. President Trump, in my most humble opinion, I was telling my friends that when he first came to office, I noticed how he was getting the generals and stuff, because most of them he got rid of, and military folk to surround him, but they walked out on him. But the bottom line yes. is, people don't think that America can be, this government can be overthrown. But if they read, uh. if they would only read the book of Revelations, the Bible yes. said Babylon the Great is fallen, yes. is fallen. That's mm -hmm. what it says. But people seem And a lot of people, they're ignorant. They, they think, they have this, oh, it can never happen to me. They have this invincibility syndrome that half of the country, majority of the country is suffering from invincibility syndrome. They think it can't happen to them. Mm -hmm. They think things can't happen. But 9-11 happened. That's right. This pandemic happened. So if these are things that you thought couldn't happen to America, in America, huh, it's just getting worse. They're so blind and walking around so blind, they, they are not going to see it till it smacks them right in their face. As better than preparing now, they're still running around like little sheep being led by things that aren't important. 
you know, this country is very sad. Very sad. Amen. Let, let, let's close in prayer, my beautiful sister. Thank you, you so much. You, you want to pray or you want me to pray? You can pray, sir. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this spiritual advisor. We thank God for Bobby Worthy. We thank God for this nation. And Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for what we're going to learn from this pandemic. We know that you will not put more on us than we can bear. Lord, you suffered for us to come a westerly course aboard a slave ship called Jesus in order to help save America from herself before she destroy herself. The black man, woman, and children have never rose up against this nation. And this was by your divine ordinance. And Lord, we are asking you to save America. Let America be what you want her to be. Heavenly Father, look upon the leaders of our nation, the first responders, the parents who have lost their children and their siblings. Strengthen them, O oh God, in the name of your son Jesus. In the name of Allah, in the name of Jehovah, whatever holy name that you give credence to, Amen. help us, dear God, to get out of the box of incarceration and indoctrination so we can look at the nation as you looked. You didn't care about denomination. You talked about from every kindred and nation. Help us to understand as we come together this night for the good of America, Lord, let your light so shine among the brotherhood and womanhood of men that they will see your great light and glorify you, which is not only in heaven, but is among us each and every day. This we pray in the most holy name that you are called. And you say that your name is holy. And you ask us to be holy as you are holy. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, my beautiful sister. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night, babe. Okay.